My name is Kylie Wilson and I am the Shorebird Monitoring and Stewardship Coordinator for Sarasota County from Audubon, Florida. All right, what do we have behind us here? So this is a black skimmer colony. Um, black skimmers are a state protected species of seabird that nest directly on the beach. This is their fourth consecutive year nesting on um, North Lido Public Beach. All right, what kind of things are you guys doing right now just to uh, protect these birds? I see the uh, fenced in area behind us and I know you guys have posted signs around just letting people know what's out here, but what's going on behind us? Yeah, so we post the area because they do colonize and they take up a large amount of space. Um, human disturbance is a big issue with these birds. So the fencing is basically to keep people out, not to keep the birds in per se. And what we do is we come out, we monitor the colony throughout their breeding season. It goes from May through August. Um, this is actually the earliest they've nested ever in Sarasota. It's uh, the end of April. And so we'll come out, we'll uh, try and count how many nesting individuals there are, how many birds total there are, and then uh, follow throughout the season and come to how many hatchlings there are and how many fledglings there are until eventually the birds have all grown up and flown off. Can you tell me a little bit about the uniqueness of these birds? Yeah, so black skimmers are a very funny species. They get a lot of attention just because of the look and the uh, sounds they make. So these are one of three species of skimmers, the only one found in North America, and they're called skimmers because of their beak. It's um, larger at the bottom and smaller at the top, so they can skim across the top of the water. And they actually feed by touch, so as soon as their bottom beak encounters a fish, the top beak snaps down. Um, they have some interesting adaptations for that. Their eyes are actually, uh, the pupils are slits, kind of like a cat's eye, to reduce glare from the sand and to reduce glare from the ocean. And they, uh, they make a lot of cute little dog-like noises. Uh, it brings a lot of fun attention to them. But right now, when it's calm, before the uh, hurricane season starts and everything, what can people do to be careful around these birds? I know some of them are right now over by the, uh, the Gulf yeah. Shore. Yeah, so um, human disturbance is a huge issue for these birds, and that is why we fence them off. But they won't always be in their posted area. They will come out and hang out by the water, and that's very crucial for them because with how so hot the summers are, they need to be able to cool off as well. And that's also true of the chicks when they hatch. The chicks, they can't fly, but they will walk out of the posted area and try to seek shade, try to sit by the water. So it's very important for people to give them their space, not to run through the colony when it's down by the water, um, not to pick up or go near the chicks. And because they are a protected species, disturbing them is actually against the law. All right. And right now, what, what are we seeing from these birds? I know we hear a lot of yipping and noises, but uh, every once in a while you can see them move around. You can see them kick so some sand. Yeah. You know, kind of so because they are beach nesting birds, they basically make what we call a scrape in the sand. And they do this by kicking out with their back legs and uh, making a little depression. And that's where they actually lay their eggs. That's another reason why we rope them off because their biggest defense is camouflage. Their eggs are very hard to see. And if we don't rope the area off, it's possible they could be stepped on. So they'll uh, pair up and they form a pair for the entirety of the season and they will kick out their little scrape, lay their eggs, and then the males and the females, they will trade places to take care of incubating the eggs. They work together to take care of the nest and to take care of the hatchlings. Now, so You also see them kind of chase each other away. What's going yeah. on there? Well, they are mating pairs. Um, they're not territorial, obviously, but they do have uh, a pair that they've linked up with. So if other birds are trying to get on their lady, they might chase them off. Um, if they're getting a little too close to where their scrape is, they might chase them off. All right. Yeah. And every once in a while you see them uh, switch spots. Uh, what's happening at that time? Yeah, so the male and the female, they both tend to the nest. And the male and the female, they both have to eat and stretch their wings. So the male will come in and replace the female. He'll come right up next to her and kind of nudge her. And then she scoots off and he scoots on. And basically that transfer is as quick as they can make it. So that way the eggs aren't vulnerable to predators or to the um, hot heat of the sun. No, I see they kind of intermingle a little bit with the uh, royal terns over there. Yeah. And the royal terns are the, the white birds with the orange beak and kind of the black top on their on their head. Um, are they pretty social birds or is this just kind of a, a thing with birds? Well yeah they all share the same habitat so the royal terns they come here they don't breed on the beach like the skimmers do but they do um, share the same space they rest on the beach after foraging in the water so they have this nice big roped off area that the skimmers aren't really defending per se they're not like a aggressive defensive bird so they will come in and just hang out they hang out by the water together as well. All right, and the skimmers, they eat uh, 
just little fish? Yeah, fish um, mainly is their entire diet. They skim the top of the water and uh, some shallow water fish that are usually up at the surface, that's their typical prey. Now, is, I know you see a lot of these birds here, and this is kind of that primary colony of what, three around the state? About three? Yeah, so we have a big colony here. Um, there's a colony down in Marco Island, and so there's also a colony um, up in St. Pete that I know of. We do actually have some banded individuals from the Marco Island colony, and I believe even in Sanibel as well. So that's how we know where these birds kind of come from. Um, but ours is one of the biggest colonies in the entire state. I think last year it was estimated to be about 20% of the entire breeding population in Florida. What is that numbers-wise? Numbers-wise, I wasn't the coordinator last year, so I'm not positive the exact numbers but um, this colony that I counted I think is about 800 individuals and then also just as far as the uh, the seasons go we have uh was it it's nesting season yes so right now there'll be eggs out here but not necessarily hatching yes so this is just the beginning of their nesting season it's still very early um and throughout this month the rest of them will be pairing up so they're still uh mating and copulating and scraping we do have eggs out but it's going to be about 28 days for those eggs to hatch and then another four to five weeks for the chicks to be able to fly so it's about a two, two and a half month long process of these birds being um, done with their nesting cycle. 